Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this postmortem of my Blitz game number 887. I had the white pieces and started off with d4. And my opponent goes knight f6, and we get into a uh, Nimzo Indian. So let's just put that on the board. c4, e6, knight c3, which allows the Nimzo, bishop b4, and e3, the Rubenstein variation. That's uh, the way I usually play it. Queen c2 is more popular at the top levels. That's the class classical or Capablanca variation. But uh, I've always played this. It's kind of like the old main line, I suppose. Um, let's see, he went ahead and castled here. Um, I go bishop d3, so all very reasonable choices. Um, b6 here is a bit of a rare move, but uh, it's not bad, actually. But the most common moves here are d5 and c5. When I when I have this position, I play with the, uh, the c5 move myself. Um, leads to interesting play for black. But uh, b6 is quite playable as well. And in fact, um, sometimes you get the same position by a different move order, so... You see, after, uh, you know, there's a few moves, now there's more moves, and now we're up to 265 moves after, or games in the database after after this number of moves. So, um, still a, quite a playable line. Uh, I castled here. He goes d5, c5 also, it's an alternative here. Oh, I wanted to show the c5 line. This I thought was kind of interesting. I looked at this a little bit because I wasn't so sure what uh, white plays here, and I noticed... Um, there was this knight a4 move as the top choice. And I think this is an interesting way to play. You're kind of threatening to trap that bishop, and you're taking the knight away so it has nowhere to uh, go, no, no, no piece to exchange itself for. So c takes d4 is a response, giving, giving the uh, bishop a retreat, and then takes, and then uh, rick to e8. And then white kicks the, the bishop, so it's a way to uh, chase the bishop away without allowing the trade. And then continues with uh, b4. Well, there are other ways to continue. And I guess the knight can come back into the game via uh, c3. Or maybe it just stays there and uh, supports a c5 push. Anyway, all seems uh, interesting. Uh, in the game, he went with uh, d5. I just wanted to check out that c5 and show you those opening ideas. So if you're ever in a position like this, you might consider a plan where you move the knight away and kick the bishop uh, to avoid the trade. I I'm not so worried about the trade myself, so I went ahead and played um, a3 and just kicked it immediately. And um, the bishop uh, most commonly retreats to d6. If you look at this position, um, the, the, the bishop has done its job in a way. It came here to pin the knight, and that uh, allowed uh, white or black, black to keep some pressure on the e4 square and prevented white from playing e4. And now that... Um, and Black has done some more development. He's got the knight here. He's got the bishop here. He's got that square pretty well under control. So he can just drop the bishop back and uh, be satisfied that I'm not going to be getting in that e4 move uh, too soon. So uh, that that's quite a playable position. He decided to go ahead and trade, which is reasonable as well. I took back, and then he went knight bd7. More commonly, they take there, but uh, all this, I think, is okay. I went ahead and took... And then here, I would say, is the first kind of uh, mistake of the game. He took with a knight, uh, and normally you take with a pawn. You, know, you take with the pawn, and you've got uh, good control over these center squares. That's what it's uh, all about. And uh, the fact that this bishop is locked in behind the pawn <clears throat> is not a big deal at the moment. This center is still a bit fluid. Uh, black is going to push the, D the C pawn forward to undermine it, and things might open up here. The uh, bishop is kind of exerting influence through the pawn, at least to the e4 square. And later, if things really do lock up, it can reposition somewhere else. So uh, anyway, that's that's uh, the most common way to play and, and probably best. So knight takes um, d5 here. We're just out of the opening book, and it's a bit of a mistake, although not because of the move I played. So the move I wanted to play here was uh, e4. And... Uh, I was very surprised to learn that actually that's the best move here. <laughs> so I thought after e4 you would just take this pawn. But as I noticed, noticed a move or two later in the game, uh, the, the knight is actually trapped there. So I could go queen c2, and that knight has no squares. The bishop is covering here, the queen's covering there. Uh, that's covered by a pawn, that's covered by the bishop, and all these forward squares are in my camp and well covered by rooks and things. So um, so that knight is trapped, and there's no way to defend it. Uh, there's an attempt to rescue it with f5, which is kind of interesting. So it's still complicated. Um, 
and in fact if you just um, take the pawn he can escape via the uh, d5 square the knight can come back to d5 so you don't want to take but what you can play is knight g5 and offer a trade so let his knight escape and then grab the e6 pawn and win the exchange and so that also is just good for white so e5 is the move to play here and that's a interesting uh, tactic to think about um, and that would have been better than c4. I, you know, I, I went to some trouble to get an e f e4 later, and uh, and uh, you know, but by then it was uh, he had counter pressure on the center, so it wasn't so great. Anyway, I went c4. He retreated his knight. <laughs> Actually, at this point. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll go ahead and show this. Uh, this is kind of a sideline. He can actually play knight c3 here. Now, I thought he couldn't play knight c3 at this point because I had noticed that the knight was trapped. But uh, in this case, he can actually uh, get counterplay this way. Bishop takes and then queen here. <laughs> and if I'm not careful, I can get in trouble. So, well, king h1 forced, queen h5. And if, for example, in my, in my first opportunity here, I, I just grab the knight, then he has a winning attack here. The check, and then f5. The rook is coming up and over, and uh, and black is winning here, even though he's a piece down. So you have to be careful. Let's see, after king h1, queen h5, uh, the king has to go to g2 to defend the pawn that way. I don't have time to take the knight. And uh, and black can play on. Apparently this position is about even, and uh, you know he can you know, continue with the attack or... Uh, yeah, the knight is still trapped. <laughs> so maybe there's a perpetual check as well. Anyway, uh, just interesting. I, I thought at the time when he couldn't play knight c3, I thought he could. And the time when he couldn't play I see when in the time when he could play knight c3, I thought he couldn't. Anyway, I went c4. He retreated his knight. Um, go rook e1. So we get some normal development here. He goes c5. That's a good move, undermining my center. Bishop b2. Uh, rook e8. Bishop c2. This uh, the chess engine didn't like so much, but I kind of like this rearrangement of pieces, getting, trying to get threats on the diagonal there. Um, he goes queen c7, and now I go uh, e4. So at this point, um, that's maybe pushing a little bit too hard. Uh, rook to c1 is recommended by the chess engine. So uh, e4, he can he can kind of I mean it weakens my center, and uh, he does take advantage of that. He grabs the d-pawn right away. I mean, I'm not losing a pawn, but uh, but I have kind of a hole in the center. And then here, if you would play e5, I think uh, black is a little better. This this kind of pawn structure, now this is fixed. My bishops aren't so good, and he has a pair of knights that can hop around and operate pretty effectively in this structure. So I think that would be good for black, and that was the chess engine assessment as well. So, so that's probably why I shouldn't have played this way. Anyway, knight c5 he played. And this allows me to push on with e5. So now I do have decent uh, compensation for having given up uh, the center there. He goes knight back to d7. Bring my queen over to the king side. And he brings his knight to f8. So that's a nice defensive move. It holds on to this pawn. I was expecting him to play h6, which uh, sometimes is weakening. And he can use uh, you know, the g pawn push to, to pry things open. So uh, a good defense. Um, and now I go knight g5. Um, let's see, white, the chess engine likes white, likes white at this position ever since I got in that e5 push. But it wants to go knight d4 here, and after knight g6, queen back to h3, and then just, um, I'll cancel, queen to h3, and then just continue with normal development like rick to d1 and stuff. Um, so there's no immediate attack apparently, but it just likes uh, the extra space that white has and the open lines for the bishops, and white does have the bishop pair. So slight edge to white here. Uh, instead I go knight g5, and he just kicks it. I, I guess I didn't quite uh, appreciate this. I was thinking I could do something here, but uh, really I have to retreat, and the best retreat is back where it came from. But uh, anyway, I wanted to leave this f file open for the pawn, so I played knight h3. Goes knight g6, kicking my queen. Rook a to c8. So black has activated all his pieces. He's looking at the c pawn. I think black is a little better at this point, but I continue with the attack. <laughs> f4. And um, let's see. Yeah, the chess engine says I should just uh, play something like rook to d1, and uh, and things will be fine. Um, 
Also, after, let's see, after knight g6, hitting my queen, I go queen g3, he went rook ac8. At this point, actually can win a pawn here, but apparently this is not so great. Like, bishop takes, pawn takes, queen takes. The chess engine even recommends queen f7, offering the queen trade uh, when black is a pawn down. I guess the point is that uh, this pawn is weak enough that black will round it up, and the structure afterwards is pretty good for black. So uh, anyway, it thinks that is fine for black as well. So rick a to d1, it recommends, is the best move. Anyway, I went f4, and uh, he went knight to uh, knight to d7. Yeah, so the chess engine likes this other maneuver, knight to e7, say rick to c1, so I have a defense of this guy. Knight to f5, getting the knight out of good square, queen f2, and queen c6. And you see that in those moves, uh, black has developed some threats of his own and activated his uh, pieces and the knight maybe can coordinate although i've got control of that square but anyway there's some uh, lingering threats and uh you know uh i think uh, black has a good position there um so knight d7 was played not the most accurate move i mean it does <clears throat> come with a threat he's just uh gonna grab that pawn but this knight is a bit out of play there and it's kind of in the way so i decided to go ahead and uh grab this pawn. I, I noticed it by now. And we just, just a pawn trade at this point. Let's see. Oh, I take on g6 and he takes on c4. Let's see. And uh, I went rook a to c1 to oppose his queen, trying to chase it to a worse square. And he found this nice move, queen to b3. Um, so I went ahead and traded and played uh, bishop to c1, which was a mistake. Uh, after bishop d4, I'm still okay here. Um, but uh, after bishop to c1, uh, and I have to say this is the first like big mistake. The other moves were uh, kind of minor inaccuracies in the game has been pretty much in the balance. Uh, could go either way up to this point. Uh, but this was a game, lo a game losing blender, <laughs> which my opponent missed. But you can spot it if you take the time. So uh, pause the video here and, and see if you can spot the tactic. It's pretty easy. Okay, I'm going to uh, give the answer away now. So it is uh, rook takes bishop. You know, it's funny, The uh, I kind of checked before playing that uh, this square that the queen can deliver a check on is covered. <laughs> but after rook takes bishop, well, if I don't take back, uh, what, I could maybe try and defend my rook. I don't, I don't know if that would work. Uh, yeah, that doesn't work. It would be with my king. Um, if I don't take back, I'm just down a piece at, at, at least. But if I do take back, then nobody's guarding the checking square, and there's that big fork there. So I lose a piece either way, and uh, and black should go on to win. Anyway, he didn't play that. He played knight to c5, which is, uh, you know, getting his knight back into the game, a logical move. But, uh, of course, you have to play those tactics when you have them. Uh, I push on with f5. He takes, and I grab on h6. And now um, he played the move knight e6, which was a mistake. He's going to defend against this mate threat. Um, and the best defense is queen f7. And this position is uh, about even. Um, but he played knight e6. So here's your second chance. Um, there's only one best move for white. See if you can find the best move. It's not like a simple tactic, but it's the best attacking move. Okay, yeah, pause the video if you want time to think about it. I'm going to give the answer away now. The best move here is uh, knight to g5, which is something I played a move later, but it's it's stronger here. It's uh, in addition to introducing the idea of, you know, queen checks on h7 and f7, it's also <laughs> hitting this knight and threatening just to take the knight at uh, mate on uh, g7. So the combination of threats is too much, and that's just a winning a winning move. Bishop takes g7. It's a kind of a cute sacrifice, but with best play, it's uh, it's actually a draw. So um, he took back, and then I played knight g5 here, and then he played uh, queen c3, which uh, actually is not the best move. Um, so let's see. Oh, after queen c3, that's what the question is for. Uh, he to show the line where he's uh, holds the draw, it's queen d5. And it's just threatening mate there. So 
you know, I can get away with a check. King goes here. I can check again. And now actually he has to bring the queen back to defend or he gets into big trouble. And uh, But I can't trade queens because I'm a piece down. If I trade queens, black wins. So I drop back and then he comes back to set up this mate thread again. And then I go forward again and he comes back again. And it's a draw by repetition. So that is that queen d5 move. I think also queen a2 uh, works as well um, to threaten a mate. That's enough for a draw. The move he played, he played queen c3 hitting my rook and uh, this should lose. So uh, another one more chance for you to find the winning tactic here, a winning tactic. So how does how does white play here? And once again, there's only one best move. OK, I'm giving the answer away now. Pause the video if you want time to think. The best move is queen to h7. The king has to go here, only move and you check on the back rank. And, uh, you know, I was kind of thinking about this, but I was somehow forgetting the knight was guarding this square. Um, so the king has to run out this way, and then I can take the knight with check. And I just have a winning attack here. And my material is even. Actually, I'm a pawn up at the moment, uh, but his king is all out in the center. And, um, and so this is just, just a win for, uh, for white. And in fact, this check is going to force his king to the, to the back rank there. Um, it might even be a mating net. It's, it's pretty pretty crowded back there, and this king queen is a little bit out of play. Have to be careful because my rook is still hanging. But anyway, that's the idea. So queen h7 was the the winning tactic. Instead, I played queen f7. Um, he went to the corner. Let's see, I went to rook f1 now, getting my rook out of the way and uh, giving giving uh, black one last chance to win the game. <laughs> so here, queen to uh, e3 check. Driving my king into the corner, queen e2 hitting the rook, say rook g1. You have this nice tactic. I just wanted to show it to you in case you didn't notice it. Um, the uh, the famous diagonal mate or pin mate. The rook comes down and mates me, and my my rook is pinned, so he can sack the queen there. So that that's the way to win it. Um, there may be other ways to play, but uh, black is winning in those lines. Instead, he went. Uh, Queen to c7. Brought his queen back to defend, naturally enough. Uh, let's see, I went uh, queen f6 here, pinning his knight. He went queen d8, and uh, I went with his check, and he lost on time. But uh, I am actually uh, winning at this point, and I, I probably won't blow it because I'll manage to get the queens off, and uh, I will take care of his uh, mate threats. Anyway, it was a, a fun game and uh, a lot of interesting tactics there. I'll see you guys later. Bye.